Hi everyone, uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, tape adhesive and IR analysis. My name is Professor Chang Yu, and I'm working as a faculty in the Department of Chemistry and Chemical Biology at RPI. So I'm going to talk to you, this is a part of the National Chemistry Day. We'll talk about the sticky stuff, and we want to know how to, we can analyze the sticky stuff using technicals IR. So what I'm going to talk to you about is an uh, outline, uh, which is uh, what is a uh, IR spectrum result on table adhesives. So let me show you the result first, and then follow uh, by the, I will explain what this IR spectroscopy means, and then they will show you that how the experiment is being performed in our lab, and then my graduate students are helping me out to, to finish that. And I will show you the conclusion. So this is, uh, we took the pictures, uh, we, uh, we took some uh, tapes from my home. Um, one is a masking tape, and then this is a different kinds of tape, packing tape. You see the electrical tape, some silver tape. That's a scotch tape that you see here, and then some other size of tape. This is a duct tape and so on. So what we can do is we can bring this sticky side and putting into the instrument called IR instrument. And we are taking those picture looks like that. Hi, I'm I'm Keith Denivo. I'm a fourth year student at, at Professor Yu's laboratory. Um, today we're going to measure um, the different adhesives that's found in common household tape. So you just have to simply take the tape and put it on top of the diamond crystal that's right here. Press it flat. Then you can just say collect sample. Um, these are several different tapes that are commonly found in the household. Um, they usually have different adhesives on there that you're able to measure using the IR. And this is all the fruit fill samples. Let me show you the first, first of uh, five samples first. So these are the five sample: the green, uh, gray, packing tape duct tape and white tape, uh, they all have this kind of the lines, which is the response from the detector, from the instrument, and showing as a function of wave numbers. So it is a spectroscopy, it deals with the wave, and they have a different wavelengths of the light or wave numbers. And then when you see that some uh, tapes material shows some response around 1700 wave number, whereas some of them are not. So they are, this means that they are, these three are chemically different from the other two. So as I kind of talked it here, number one and number five samples are showing a peak around 1700, and the other three you know, did not show. So if I go to the other samples shown up here, so once again, IR spectrum was being measured, as a function of wave numbers, and different wave numbers show the different motions of molecules, and I will explain you in the following slide. And we find that 1700, the sample 678, which is a, a silver tape, thick rubber tape, and the electric tape, uh, black electric tape, they have uh, these peaks around the 1700. And whereas uh, also the scotch tape and the thick white rubber tape, and those are the one that showing this, uh, showing the peak. Whereas uh, this the packing uh, packaging tape, and also this is a masking tape that cream color, and then these are the one that do not show. So they are chemically different from the other. So it's kind of interesting for you to know. This is the main message for today. Tapes are all kind of sticky stuff like this, but they are not chemically the same. Some of the chemicals are the same, some of the chemicals are not. Depending on the, I guess, the stickiness they want to control on the surfaces they are being used. So this is a sort of the uh, mini conclusion that these are the tapes that we have looked at it. Those in the white circles are one that's showing some uh, peaks around 1700 in IR spectroscopy. So they are chemically similar. What that means is the one that is not box in the red, they are chemically different from the those in the box. 
And so and I'm going to talk to you about what is an IR spectroscopy, and I'm going to see some uh, animation showing the molecules in motion. Hey, hi everyone. Uh, this is I'm going to show you some molecular motion uh, using the IR spectroscopy, how they are related. Uh, here's an example of compound called uh, one hexene. And uh, there is a peak in the IR, certain wave number around 3000 or even higher. And this is a motion related to carbon and hydrogen uh, vibration in this way. And this carbon is connected by the double bond. And then if you, if I go to the other, other portion, then this is another kind of motion. They call the symmetric stretching. And this is an anti-symmetric stretching of the carbon with the three hydrogens. So molecules are essentially at room temperature, so they have a thermal energy to vibrate the bond, and this vibration and motion is captured by this bunch of peaks in the IR. And this peaks around 3,000 is particularly useful for us to, uh, to look at the CH motions. So this is a symmetric stretch, so this is all, all can be uh, can be looked at, and they showed in the higher peak. So the molecules are moving. So this is a kind of interesting place where what they call the uh, out of plane motion when you have a carbon double bond and CH. This is where things are being kind of um, vibrating, and that's around the 900 um, peak, and they showed in, in gray. And this is a, a carbon carbon double bond, and that's around the 1600. And this is a carbon-carbon double bond. So this IR spectroscopy therefore allow us to understand uh, the motion of this molecule. Uh, this software was uh, provided is a computational model being provided by this uh, Perkin Elmer IR tutor. And then I want to show you that I talked about the 1700 P, and that has something to do with the motion in in this called the. Uh, uh, the ketone. So if you look at here, and this is a carbon and an oxygen, it's a double bond, and there is a strong peak here, to, which is represented of carbon in a peak, CO double bond stretch. And this is what you what you guys have seen in the uh, adhesive. Some of them have a 1700, some of them has not. And this has something to do with the distinct vibration or spectrum uh, around the carbon uh, ketone. I'm a second year PhD student at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, and today we're going to talk to you about FTIR, or Fourier Transform Infrared. This is our spectrometer right here, and basically this instrument allows you to examine the fingerprint spectrum of any compound or any substance you want. Essentially, you would put your sample right here on the center of this little platform, and the IR beam would come up from underneath and scan into your sample to produce your spectrum on the computer. So we're going to measure adhesives that are found on common household tape. All you have to do is put it above this sensor here in the middle. And then we can run the IR spectra. So finally, to a conclusion, what we learned today, uh, we using the different tapes, uh, and we know that they are not all the tapes are chemically the same. Some of them are same, some of them are different. And we have used an IR spectroscopy uh, to identify uh, tapes of this kind, such as uh, uh, this green uh, masking tape, and this uh, white tape, and the silver tape, and also the scotch tape and, and those electric tape, uh, they are the similar kind, but those uh, with the packing tape and, and so on, they are chemically different. And how do you figure it out? We're using the vibrational spectroscopy. I have shown you some vibrational motion of the chemical bond, particularly the carbon oxygen double bond um, vibrates at the uh, 1700 per centimeter wave number, and then some of them has a ketone group, CO double bond, some of them do not. So we learned that 
tapes can be analyzed using IR spectroscopy, and uh, we find that some of them are same, some of them are different. Thank you for your attention, and uh, it was nice meeting you.